All right, so today we're going to be talking about um, what I think is one of the more interesting pieces in my collection, and that is a World War I French Adrian helmet. Um, as you can see by the dirt and the rust, this is actually a Battlefield Recovered example. Uh, now, being Battlefield Recovered, it does actually have some battle damage uh, here on the crest. As you can see, we have one entry hole and one exit hole there. Um, actually, there were two more pins, if you look in the bottom here, they were actually holding the crest on, and those were actually knocked out by the force of the hit. Um, I don't believe that this was struck while the soldier was actually wearing this helmet, uh, simply because, as you can see, the hole came in through the back of the helmet. Uh, so I believe that this was probably already laying on the field uh, when it was struck, which unfortunately means the soldier originally issued this probably did die on the field. Um, either that or he lost it while he was going over the top. Uh, so this is an infantry helmet. Uh, you can tell because of the emblem on the front. The French infantry and cavalry had the exploding bomb on the front, and this one says RI, so that would have been infantry. Now these helmets were really the first steel helmets ever issued to French combat troops. Uh, World War I was really the first modern war where we saw helmets being reintroduced into combat since medieval times. Uh, simply because with all of the artillery and grenades, uh, death due to shrapnel was becoming a major problem. And you know, before this point, French soldiers were using uh, steel skull caps in some cases. And this was the first standard issue helmet. It's called the M15 or the Model 15. Adrian. And the French supplied this to a bunch of other countries. They sold them uh, throughout the world. Uh, Brazil had them for a while. I believe Serbia had them for a while. They even sold them to the Russians. Now, this helmet might have been effective at stopping shrapnel, but again, as you can see from the bullet strike, this was not going to protect you uh, from a bullet. It was never meant to. And most of the reports from the front line indicate that these were actually one of the first pieces of equipment that soldiers would get rid of. Uh, simply because it wasn't going to protect them from bullets. And also, because of the way the emblem here is actually mounted to the helmet, which I can show you. Uh, so you can kind of see there those two little cross pieces of metal. They had to drill two holes in the front of the helmet to attach that. And apparently that severely weakened it in the front. Meaning that any bullet strike in this general region had absolutely no chance of glancing off and you were basically dead. Honestly, you were probably dead anyway if you got hit anywhere in the helmet. Unless it was a glancing blow with maybe a pistol round. But anything, rifle or machine gun, would have gone straight through this. Now, I don't believe this was on the battlefield for very long before it was recovered. It's not rusted through in any spots, and most of the rust is surface. Uh, also... There's just a very large amount of the bluish-gray paint that they use still left on the piece. And there's very little mud, honestly. I mean, except around the grooves here, around the emblem, and around the ridges. So I don't think this was sitting on the battlefield for more than a few years after the war ended before somebody picked it up. And yeah, this is the only relic condition item in my collection. And I think it tells a very interesting story, and I am very lucky to have it. So, I'll post a few still photos, as I always do at the end of this video, and I would like to thank you all for watching.